Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the NAC All Playoffs. We're here in the Grand Finals, game number two. Team Coast with a win already in game number one. We'll see if complexity can bring things back. I am Rapid. I'm joined by Studio and EGAD. We are getting out onto the rift for our second game of this best of five. Game one, we saw a very defensive start from both sides. No one going too offensive until the late invade from complexity for the Coast Blue buff. However, Last time, last time we saw MIA play Fiddlesticks, they went for an aggressive invade, uh, actually set up a trap that did not capture a kill, but did blow a ghost. All right, looks like they're going to blow something else down bottom as the rocket jump does come out. The slow is on with Fusion right now. They're looking for potentially the Crow. They do throw it onto Nintendo Act. And he said he started off defensive last time. He started with the Dorn's Ring and three biscuits to go along while Mega Zero and Zion Spartan. She's going to trade it back out on top. Mega Zero winning out on this one pretty hard. Will Fortune of Broken Wings away as well as that burnout. And still, the chase is on. There's now Daydreaming going to come in, going to get fear. Actually, no, going to get slowed by the Dustbringer and force the flay and back on out. And already a shift in the very passive start we had last game. Just lots of action all over the place. The, the thing is, without uh, you know hard CC or lots of chained uh, damage burst abilities, no one at level 1 can actually get a kill. So <laughs> 2v2s and 1v1s are cool and all, but only Olaf can really easily secure that kill. And it's been nice to see uh, a lot of aggression early on, a lot of, you know, scary positioning, nothing quite happening. All summoners still oh. up. <laughs> Nintendo Dex just walks around the corner, face checks right into MIA and Jupiter. It's like, oh, hey, what's up, guys? Back into his own jungle, his axe guarding the gateway to his own jungle. And at least for now, probably should set up for a relatively passive start, but uh, will be uh -huh. MIA and Jupiter looking to come around the corner. All right, we're going to see a crow get thrown out there. A flash flare to MIA. He's going to flash away as well. The Undertow connects. The Ignite is down. It's going to be a three-man slow from Jupiter, but it's not Super. enough. He's going to be able to pick up an Intendrid X there. Gets one, gets the reset. Going to jump back over the wall. Will this be a flash follow from his fusion? It looks like no. And Jupiter, <laughs> where are you going? He's going on a little adventure, and he will stop by the white. Back on out with his kill and feeling strong. Jupiter the Explorer. He's kind of taking the scenic <laughs> route through the jungle. We'll make it back to base alive after Rocket jumping into the entire team. Unfortunately for Nintendo Dex, he missed that first axe onto MIA, which means he didn't get the slow, he didn't get enough damage, and got chased out a little bit too far, uh, able to actually finally, finally succumb to Tuber's damage. But overall, a better exchange in favor of Coast. They, of course, pick up the first blood, a little bit more gold going towards them, and because they're still in the bot lane, they're actually getting a lot more CS can deny quite a bit to Tuber, who did have to go back to base. Now, Shifter hit a very early level 2, does have a CS advantage, and is going to be very strong there in that mid lane against Jinte, at least early on. But still, the pushing advantage is what's going to be uh, most important as Ninja Ken looks to come in for a game. Alright, so it makes his presence known. There's a nice crow bouncer, the perfect crow bounce from the Dark Winds. And that will not be a lot of harass. We did, see, we did see him go back and pick up a ward, some mana potions, and some potions from Sonic Trooper. Well, this fusion going to hold on to his gold. Shifter goes in, does get the ethereal chain, going to lock him up in front of his turret, but does not want to dive up. And showing his dominance this early on is very dangerous, while some golems gets uh, gets taken out there by Trooper. And unfortunately for Jinte, his big response to LeBlanc is going to be pushing hard, but that just sets a really good chance for Nintendo Dex. And if he's in the middle of the lane like that, if there's not a big minion, way of pressuring Shifter, he just moves forward with the Distortion, and he can easily land his combo, easily land his April Chains, and that will be a silenced Jinpei, a slow Jinpei who's going to take a lot of auto-attack harass, and just doesn't have a real response until he gets some jungler backup and pushes out hard. And uh, while you'd normally expect to see LeBlanc's max their Qs, is actually the Distortion max from Shifter that will help him push in, getting him a lot of extra wave clear against Ziggs, and while it won't necessarily be on that same level, it's definitely going to help keep the lane a little bit even, especially very early on. Jinte out of mana, Shifter very strong there. And something cool about the dist Distortion Max, you can actually hit both the Creep Wave and the Champion a lot more reliably than what's like, say Bouncing Bond Hood. So it's also really good harass. Uh, very mana intensive and can be risky if you waste it. Actually, if you're on a Daydream in the bot lane, lots of trades going on, but nothing's really happening. Not too crazy. We do have uh, Jupiter getting a little unhealthy, but still there's a huge wave up top that's going to push in on the Mega Zero, and just the harass back and forth and everything. And something to notice, uh, this is the 3.15 patch. Actually, Mega Zero walking right into the brush. Face checks into Zion Spartan. There's Ninja Ken there, but Mega Zero dropping down dangerously oh. low. Even if he hadn't died there from the ticks, it would have been the minions to take him down. That's going to be a nice kill there behind the turret. Chinte Whoa. Uh, flashed back oh. in. It wasn't enough, and that's going to be a kill for Shifter. Nice play there by Shifter using the last tick of Ignite. Even getting Chinte's flash out there, just distortioning back on out of there, as well as using his own flash. So an even trade back and forth. Still a ignite available for Jinte, but either way, that's going to put a 3-1 to one for Coast. And unfortunately, Jinte, he was going for a flash ignite auto attack, which with a tower attack might have been enough to finish off Shifter. Unfortunately, Distortion Man, you can still teleport to it. It is a laundry for three seconds. Ninja Ken top lane takes a lot of damage uh, being chased out of the lane. Whoa. 
Looks like the fear coming in from the Mac. <laughs> and that's oh, how it actually comes there. in. Super played right back onto the Flame Jumpers. Forced to jump back away. Now MIA is just going to drain tank just a little bit. Bouncing Crows, the legendary Triple Crow onto his fusion. So a lot of damage, damage there. Oh, that, that Crow Bounce, uh, it can either be about mm. 70 for last to one person, or it can be 200 of one. Intended X coming from the back. Gonna eat two short shots, throw in an undertow. Not do too much damage there. He's gonna be forced to back out, so no dive just yet. But it looks like Mega's his back chasing. was... Yeah, his back was stopped. We're gonna see him jumping out the Wiz Fusion. He cleanses away from the slow, but it's not enough. MIA gets one. The reset of the jump in. He's gonna drain as much damage as possible away. Looking to get the death sentence. Cannot get it. Trying to predict where he's gonna attack move. Looks like the flash, the auto attack, and they reset the turret aggro. What? And is he gonna live? Oh, oh, the ignite from Daydreaming does pick up the kill. It will be the two for one. Trading Trooper for with Fusion and Daydreamin. And that is that drain damage. Uh, MIA, if he's not being interrupted because he did start with Doran's Dream, because he does have two points in the drain, uh, well, drain is that, I believe. He's, he's almost half health. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's one of the highest single target damage skills in the game, if not for non-ultimates. So if you go, uh, get a five second drain on someone, or even three seconds, compared to most supports and their possible output, only Annie can really compare. And coincidentally, Annie, a favorite of MIA. And especially MIA's Fiddlesticks, we've seen this guy get more kills than any single member of his team in some of the games that Team Co or that uh, Complexity have, ha have played. Now Team Coast, they're taking a little bit of a different take to this game. While Complexity's bottom lane actually looking really well, uh, it's going to be the top and mid for Team Coast that are actually starting to get their snowballs rolling. Pickaxe! Top lane for Zion Spartan could set him up for that Ravenous Hydra build or be a very early Last Whisper against all of Mega Zero's defenses. Now, Mega Zero, normally you'd see him have more advantage on Shivana, but that early kill, walked in the wrong brush for a long time as Jente. And you can see the range of those chains you cannot really escape that extra bit of harass. And it's just being uh, dominated mid lane in terms of uh, trades, but CS is at least relatively even. And yeah, Dabot, so just trading back and forth. Shifter has that level ultimate. Looking for the Mimic, does get the distortion, does oh get the chain. God. Auto attack for the last hit on the kill. As now a fear on a daydreaming. Are they going to look for anything else? The flame choppers are thrown out. The bounce from the crow, just perfect. And that is just some nice harass back and forth. But either way, Shifter now snowballing in that mid lane has the finish codex looking for that DFG first. As now a blue buff fight in that defense. Now it's Ninja Ken going in there, throws out the dust the dust springer. He's not gonna be too committed to that, but with the blue buff secured, spell shield's gonna transfer it over to Zion Spartan as it was not enough and I'm not sure where it was worth that smite. You know, maybe sending a message, hey, I can smite things away from you, new and then tend you to X. Whoa! But Crow's throwing bottom lane behind the turret. Trooper's gonna jump back in, gets another one. It's the explosive shot and the buster shot to finish off the second kill. Trooper having a super game down there, and the bottom lane gonna take a turret with him as well. It looks like MIA was a key to all this. Doesn't need the fiddlesticks back of that fiddlesticks damage because he's going for the AP. That Crow Storm hits for so much. Normally a fiddlestick support does pretty okay damage, but you know what, he's got that Seeker's Arm Guard, he's got a Doran's Ring that sets up so much for Trooper who had great rocket jumps in to finish off both Wiz Fusion and Daydreamin'. Uh, last time, uh, Trissant did not get off the ground, he was very far behind Jinx, actually already behind in CS, but mm -hmm. guess what, those two kills and two assists easily make up for that difference and done some. So if Trooper can get off the ground, you know, it's on front doing a little comp lane, but Trooper is playing someone that can very easily stay out of range of Riven, and this might be dangerous for us. Yeah, and we do see a little bit of trade back and forth, but MIA is built now. Seeker's Arm Guard building towards Zonia's Hourglass, and that Frost Fang now that was upgraded. Actually, no, he just picked it up flat. So just a Frost Fang for that eight, eight extra gold on spell cast and hit, as well as the auto attack. So going to be looking for some gold income, going to be looking for a lot of harass, and some matter regeneration for the Doran's Ring, and that will help him just keep on uh, throwing out those abilities. Yeah, Frost Fang, of course, very cool um, for Fiddlesticks once he gets to level 2. The initial item does not work on spell cast with those crow throws. Not going to give him any extra moolah, and of course, uh, Fiddle 6 auto attacks, they're a little bit short range and a little bit weak to really risk going in range. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and once you get it up to the Frost Queen's claim, it actually, oh, Axe lands onto MIA. Uh, okay, crisis averted. I can't talk about the Frost Queen's claim. What it does is it gives you an active that's kind of like uh, the Shard of True Eyes. It slows, you guys, it slows them down, and with the Crow Storm, keeps you in that uh, area of effect damage. Now, Jinte versus Shifter. There's the bounce. Silence out there. The oh! chains land, and that is not going to be good for Jinte. Last auto attack. Shifter on a killing spree in the mid lane. The rubber ducky faded, but up top now, Zion Spartan and Mega Zero going back out of the sword. The sword is popped, but there's nothing else to connect. But now, Death, Death Sentence in the bot lane. The box comes through. Trooper stuck in that one. Going to get slowed out. Forced to rocket jump away. Super Mega Death Rocket does actually connect. 
But are they going to chase any further? Well, Zion Spartan and Mega Zero still just going back at it up top. Wind Flash was already down. Flash forward from Wiz Fusion. Looking for the kill. Needs one more. Fishbones, are you going to fail? No. And it looks like the sight given from the Lantern will give him the kill. All the real chain does get shielded up in the mid lane. Shifter going to be able to back out of there. And making it 8 for 5 still in Coast's favor. Only 300 gold in Coast's favor, though. Very even matchup across the board. But you can see Coast kind of evolving some of their carries. Shifter. Dominant in the mid lane, 3 0 0. He's killing Jinte left and right. Jinte's still getting farm, which is nice, but once LeBlanc gets out of control, if, if Shipper can stay a little bit more defensive, doesn't get caught out by, let's say, a Fiddlestick Sphere, he can get, keep picking up kills and there's nothing to stop him. But now it's going to be a dragon here for Coast, taking it down very low, half HP. There's going to be a Mega Inferno Bomb, not enough. Nintendo is pretty low, but over the wall, Daydream and finds out MIA, pushes him back away, going for the dive top lane. Mega Zero already taking turret aggro. There's the Ignite. Could Zion turn this around? Flash out for Mega Zero. He's on the run. Zion Spartan, can he catch him out? Looks like the answer is no. Nice disengage, but very aggressive from Mega Zero. Zero does out the Ignite. That was really weird. That was kind of, kind of like West Race yesterday, where he kind of took too many turret shots. It was like, ah, I need to back out. <laughs> but he didn't die. And that yeah. <laughs> so not quite going full West Race, which, I mean, I love West Race, so I feel kind of bad saying that. But it was a rough game from uh, last night. Regardless, of Mega Zero uh, up top lane, he's just falling behind. Once you fall behind a ribbon, it really doesn't matter what champion you are. Because he just has the perfect kick to keep on snowballing. I mean, the Broken Wings uh, damage is high. The damage from her passive means that auto attack, ta auto attack trades are almost impossible to do efficiently. And all of a sudden, Zion Spartan um, is completely dominating Mega Zero, who will not get any real sustain outside of that Doran's ring or Doran's blade. But right now, it's going to be probably the mid lane's most important top lane though. Is Mega Zero getting jumped on? Zion's there oh! as well, missing the undertow. Nintendo Dex going uh, hard. Oh! Oh! It's a minion <laughs> with it. He didn't hit. He didn't. Pick up the axe, so he does have a reset on Undertow. Missed the true damage onto Mega Zero. He's dead. He's gonna survive, and now Ninja Ken Wait. there could look to pick up a kill. It's Can a Nintendo turn damage. this around? There's gonna be dust for you out there. There's oh, a light. He, he gets it. Minion and damage. It. Is it enough? Yes, it is. Ninja Ken <laughs> grabs the kill on a Nintendo X. Nintendo X with the smallest play of the century, missing the axe. Unfortunately, he just misclicked and. If you misclick on a Shivana like that, give away that kill. That's oh, the crow storm coming in mid lane. Now flashes fears on a danger. I mean, they're not gonna turn it time. I got too excited, but now Shifter coming in from the back. Now looking to see what it gives the Shooper. The rubber ducky's thrown out. It'll scare them away. <laughs> Nobody wants to go to that pool party. Scariest rubber ducky and a. I don't know anybody that wants to step too close to that one. I don't know. Like, if you're just walking down the road and somebody throws a rubber ducky at you, you're just like, uh. Uh, okay, and then you just like walk away. You don't really want to, you know, intrinsically find out what's up with that. So and that one's beeping too. Like, there's something <laughs> up with that ducky. That ducky ain't right. Just saying. But uh, that's actually really unfortunate. However, that is a good chance to make a zero up top lane. Now has a chain vest, has a giant spell, a lot more tankiness. Now you can really effectively trade versus down far. Who with that TMX can also trade back as well. Actually, just look at the numbers going down. Both are pretty even. A little bit more in favor of Zion Spartan, but that final uh, fire breath will actually kind of equal out the damage being done for both sides. And that's actually something cool about Zion Spartan's build. While Mega Zero you saw go for the Bloodthirster first into a lot of armor penetration, it is going to be that Ravenous Hydra for Zion Spartan. It's one of his favorite items, builds it on absolutely everything. And at least in that matchup versus Mega Zero, Shivana will really help even out that pushing disadvantage. And speaking of items, DFG was now completed for Shifter, so that burst potential is going to be huge. MIA is going to have a rough time. Jinte and Chuper going to be his targets as well, so we'll see if he can get any of those infamous LeBlanc one-shots. He's still 3-0. and Going to see if he can go legendary with that, but Undertow comes through the current off the wave. They're just pushing it out, and this tier 1 in the mid lane is getting dangerously low, so it could look to be the second turn of the game for Complexity if they keep this push up. Yeah, he's pushing here for Complexity. Not a lot of health there on the turret. Rocket jump out, nope. though. Jimmy Shifter coming in. Where's wow. the damage? MIA! MIA uh, back in the base takes the hard trip back to base. It's now Chooper back taking a lot of damage. And can Zion get oh. in there with Slash and it's Daydream and picks up the kill on a Chooper. Bottom lane. Bottomed out there is now it's uh, Zion Spartan and the rest of Team Coast pushing in onto possibly a turret of their own. It's Wiz Fusion. He's been bottom this whole time taking out turrets of his own. And uh, complexity, they had a really cool plan. Just go ahead, go for a hard push mid. Jinta was going to be the bot lane or could protect the bot lane with Megan Inferno Bomb. There was no risk of their, their bot turret being taken, and they could just try and uh, safely push ahead. Thing is, they used the bomb to stop the minion wave bot lane. All of a sudden, they had no way to fight back. Ninja next, they lose Ninja Ken. Oh, uh, oh, here comes Shifter. It actually double distorted there with the Mimic in that, but it could not fire the chain or the. Uh, he got the signal, but Ninja Ken flashing away kept him safe, kept him alive, and 
the red buff was stolen away by Nintendo Dex. We're going to see Mega Zero come in. He's going to look to clear out that pink ward as he did just walk by it. There we go. He's going down. Dragon in a minute and 40. So we'll see which team wants to take control of that as it already is in the control of Coast with their pink wards and the wood covered. And just some phenomenal plays coming in from Coast Shifter. Almost, almost getting those uh, distance closed. Now Ninja Ken started to pick up some kills and along with it, looks like we will see a Phage into Trinity Force. Once again, going for that carry Nocturne build. And while there will still probably be some more defensive items uh, as far as his build's concerned, nice to see him going for the carry a little bit ahead of schedule, but hey, it's nice to see the thought there against the uh, Nintendo Dex, who has been having a little bit of a trouble, will still be building full tank. Uh, a few months ago, the meta for Kuri used to be pick Ari and kill supports. And that is the case with uh, this game. It's not Ari, it's uh, Shifter playing LeBlanc, kind of similar. And that is going to be the the one person that will stop Shifter from being played because of that long duration CC in the field. So every time Shifter moves forward into a group of people from the coast, he's going to be looking for a quick burst onto MIA because that is the only thing that's going to shut him down. Which means that MIA, like you saw him playing defensively, he, he saw Shifter recalling in the mid lane, not try to interrupt it because you know if he did, he'd probably die. A DFG burst is just insane. Yeah, but something that actually works in Shifter's favor is the new patch, 3.15, only a 2.25 second fear there for MIA as he is now hitting level 9 and does have that maxed out. Uh, clearing out some wards there with that sweeping lens, backing out as Top lane, Zion still going for the split push. There's going to be a roam from Shifter. Now Mega Zero getting chased uh, away. Hand Shifter find this kill. He's getting knocked up there. Zion Spartan continuing that chase on out. Mega Zero is going to run right in Shifter. Doesn't find the chains. Can he mimic chain? another one? There it is. Dragon form over the wall descending, keeping Mega Zero safe for now. All right, we're seeing them push down mid. Zap doesn't connect. The bomb's going through fear. He just runs right out of it. And uh, that'll be the end of that. But I thought... I thought he would look for the chain blind and the tri and it was connect, but it, you know, burnout from Shivana, pretty strong, pretty fast, and uh, Mega Zero gets out. It can be a little, uh, pretty hard to predict a yeah. uh, blind shot like that, yep. especially with high move speed. But now Dragon being, uh, being a sense of high complexity. All right, Lancer comes in. He's going to pull in the Tendrax away to safety. Box comes in. Fear on a daydreaming right now. There's the crow bouncing back and forth perfectly. Paranoia comes in. There's the bomb as well. Chooper with the jump gets the kill. Looking for two. Got to go on a Nintendo Dex, but he does have Ragnarok activated. Drops the ward as he turns around. Ghost going to keep him sped up. He throws out the Undertale while he turns around. But Zion Spartan joining the party a little late. Drops the ward. It will get cleared up by that Seeker's Lens. And with that, Dragon is live. And which team will get it? Well, there's actually two dragons there for complexity, so they actually lost dragon number one. Now here in the second dragon, with twice the amount of dragons in the pit, it's going to look good for them, and indeed it is Jinte. Actually, he will take that one down. Zap to come out there. Zion Spartan get in there with some damage, takes some damage in return, backs off for now. Shifter still has uh, a lot of damage left to do. Bounces over the wall. We will retreat there with the distortion. There's some extra harass coming up from that wind slide from Zion's part. He knew, you know what, I've used the skill. I'm not gonna pick up the kill, but I can apply some DPS. They go aggressive. MI is in the brush looking for initiation with oh. that crow storm. This could be huge for complexity. All right, we'll see what he does to prep it right now. He does go in, getting the fear out of Zion Spartan. A ton of damage, Ignite, Sassa charge, everything. Mega Zero picks up one, has Dragons Ascent. Now, Ethereal Chain connects. The Super Mega Death Rocket does connect, and it will be the single Siles from Shifter to put him on a Rampage. Still hasn't died just yet, trading one for one. It will be the both top laners, both dying. And <laughs> Death Sentence into a cheeky little Lantern there to shield the Daydreaming through that one. And the push is going to be on. Coast could get this turn, but a bunch of Wave Clear from Jinte is completely denying them. And Shitzer's just having a great performance so far. The Deathfire grabs all the damage he needs to get him through this big mid game until his next big buy, which should be a death cap, but call, could also see a Void Staff coming out as there's going to be some oh! Mega Zero Flash Fear. There's the damage coming down. Shut down on the Shifter. Zap over the wall and some rockets to come out from his fusion, but it's just not going to be enough. I Huge play from MIA. Revenge of the supports, able to pick up kills on, on the LeBlancs. That's got to feel good. Uh, Shifter, he's showing his real prowess right now, able to chain CC Mega Zero in that last fight, who could not use the Dragons to set to escape defensively. That's something LeBlanc is really good at punishing anybody that relies on a skill for uh, kind of hard movement. You know, dash and blinks in the mid lane. If Jinte got hit by the Ethereal Chains, would not have a chance to satchel charge away. Now Mega Zero being rooted up in silence cannot activate that uh, if he gets Sanjo Sigil into the Ethereal. Now this game, it's actually going to go the same way that the last game went as far as AD carries are concerned. There's going to be a few more kills there, but still a massive CS differential between Shooper and Wiz Fusion, who is going to go for the other lifesteal item in the Bloodthirster versus the same build we saw from Shooper in game number one, grabbing out that Blade of the Ruined King. 
So kind of that same style. Of, people like play the Runekin on Tristan as well because she gets so much base attack speed that that passive, that proc of 5% of her HP being drained uh, for attack is huge. That is a massive amount of damage when you compare it to just a raw Bloodthirster against high HP targets like, let's say, Nintendo Dex can be very effective. Thing is, Zion Spark won't build a lot of HP. Shifter will be very squishy himself, so not going to be the most effective versus some of the Assassins. Those Assassins actually might be going for him right now. Oh, there's the Mimic as well oh as the Distortion. It's Shifter. just a four shot coming in there. Zion Spark ain't going to be the tank for that. Get Shifter a nice clean kill. And just a rough day for anybody that's squishy on the side of the complexity. There's so many ways for a good switch to get blown up this game. This is double assassin, which can be scary. We saw Zion Spartan already get completely chunked out in a team fight. Yeah. So he's not tanky, and they don't really have a good front runner besides Nintendo Dex, who isn't really that tanky himself. Oh, but look at the rotation here. Coming out of TM Coast, Ninja Ken, can he get out of there in time? Looks like yes, even though a rare undertow does land there for Nintendo Dex, it's not going to be enough to get uh, Team Coast to kill. They will find a kill there on the top turret. Their third of the game going down. And turrets are pretty equal across the board. One in favor of Coast, but what turret is that going to be? Well, the top turret is down for Coast versus Complexities, which uh, they haven't taken Coast in response. That's not a huge difference. It's pretty even across the board. Once one team gets a slight advantage, those turrets go down very easily. I think this game is more or less dead even. The question is, who has the goal? Oh, I mean, Shifter looks for it, gets the chain for the Jinta. The Super Mega Death Rocket connects, and the chain oh. will pick up the kill. Shifter with the moves. The communication from Coast is on point. And that was just beautifully played. <laughs> and I don't know about Jintei, my body was not ready for that damage. And you're just going to see that get higher and higher as uh, now a blasting one onto Shifter. Could be, once again, both of the uh, Void Staff or Death Fire, or Death Cap, mm -hmm. rather. A lot of death already <laughs> in Shifter's build. Six, one, and two, the score. Yeah, double death build with the Death Cap and Death Fire grabs would be effective. Uh, if he's looking for any sort of damage onto Mega Zero and even a, a little bit onto Ship Jinte, who does have the themes. Zion Swarm hops the ulti, gets the Hydra, but gets feared and Buster shot it away. Chooper, can you get this kill? Looks like no. The mobility and the Lantern, gonna pull him through. <laughs> That's funny how his, his sword just flies back when he takes the Lantern. I mean, you're, you're traveling through the air being pulled by a lantern what? from a spooky jailkeeper. Uh, I, I would be a little bit uncontrolled with my sword as well. Just saying, just saying, but still. Uh, the assassination potential from Zion Spartan isn't quite there. Uh, the, the stun on the fiddle six wasn't long enough. It is very brief coming out from Ribbon because thank God if it was any longer, I don't know how I'd play this game. But uh, luckily for MI, he has built tank. He does have that zone as hourglass. If he gone for straight up support build, might still be a bit too squishy. But that hour hourglass means he can actually survive versus Zion Spartan. Not so much versus Shifter if he gets the silence off, but it's going to be at least a saving grace for him. This game is starting to get to that place where anything can happen. Both teams actually very, very strong. The cold count, about 1,000 difference. Yes, it's in favor of Coast, and they do have the kill advantage, but let's just be honest. Complexity have been able to find ways to fire back, and a couple of things are about to happen for Coast, though. Shifter is about to have his next big, powerful buy. He does have that Void Staff inventory, and Zion Spartan's actually going the Faker build. He's been running this a lot with the Spirit Visage. Instead of going for cooldown reduction aggressively, you get it passively along with a lot of extra life steal. And of course, the cooldown reduction, Shifter, please. And this is a lot of skills, but it's just way too much damage. You've got the double assassin comp there. Zion Spartan, Shifter, both able to take down Mega Zero. DFG, everything combo together, Wind Slash as well as an Ignite from Shifter to secure that kill, make it easy peasy. We do see them clearing out some pink wards by the Dragon Pit. They know it is currently coming up in about a second, so they will try to sneak this one through. Nintendo X is going to make his way down, throws out the Undertoes, and it already has been initiated here by the side of Complexity. We do see them looking to make a three-man push up here, though, as they might get a tier two for the Dragon that did just end up falling over to Complexity. Nintendo X might just try and sell that top push. And Mike, can you pick something up? Looks like Cursor over the wall. The Fear connects, but the Destiny's response isn't going to connect. It's going to be the double distortion, but now the Zelda's Hourglass with the flay and he is not long for this world. Oh, he flashes Flash! over the wall! Well, and I, rocket. He's Where's gonna, the rocket? Where's the rocket? They're gonna chase it down. Distortion for Shifter gets him the kill and the killing speed. Beautifully played, but not enough. But the tier 2 in the bot lane now are gonna be their target. Looking to trade top for bot as this is gonna get laid into and it should fall. The next few auto attacks is using the other to clear it out. But Jin with his own raid clear gonna help him guarantee that that turret falls. And that is gonna be a turret for turret and a kill for Coast as now with Zion Spartan getting initiated on him by Mega Zero. And can he get him before he gets the kill? He leaps over the wall. Wiz Fusion is currently there, and that is it. <laughs> I mean, MIA, he went down. He did not get a kill, but he did stall out the retreat, did stall that turret push onto the inner turret, which meant that, well, guess what? Complexity got one response. Mega Zero going for the blue buff. Sounds probably a bit dangerous. Here comes Ninja Cat. 
Right in on top of Zion Spartan. He's gonna get away from there. And the Mega Inferno Bomb does not land. Now it's Shifter getting in onto Mega Zero. Makes him look like paper, just blowing him up. And now Jintae getting slowed out there. Throws some more slow. <laughs> Okay, let's just be real. That should probably be illegal. Super getting out of there as well as MIA. Complexity in full retreat after Shifter um, probably needs to add a T into that name because that's the level his damage is on. <laughs> getting Shiftered. I think that's going to be a thing after this game is because Jintae, he's been Shiftered all game long. Unfortunately, he, he does never, he never has a chance to build defensively. Even Zonia's Hourglass, it's not that great versus LeBlanc because, well, you activate it, but you, you can't activate items while silenced. So, if you get hit by the in initial Sigil, well, Shiftered gets a kill anyways. He might go for a Banshee's build later on. Looks like he's going for a Death Cap build. This is common on Ziggs, but because it makes it very tremendous. It was the same build that Shifter went for last game. And eventually you'll build a Lich Fane into it, but it means that you just need to land a Bouncing Bomb, uh, the ultimate at an auto attack, and that will usually pick up a kill on someone squishy, like LeBlanc, like Jinx. So for right now, we're going to see Bias coming out for a team coast, head back to base, pick up a ton of extra well, resistances, CC reduction there in the Mercury Treads for Zion, and now looking for a last Whisper. Took a detour through some extra magic resistance, and I actually really like that because it helps him out against Jinte, yes, but Mega Zero's uh, Shivana actually does a lot of magic damage, too. And oh, okay, oh, close. Jinte. Rocket, 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 here it comes. Oh, is he going to connect? Am I Oh, oh yes. the AOE. Barely it's picks up the kill. Did. Oh, that was well played. MIA trying. If he just stopped moving and took it to the face, it would have been better. There's a ward now currently placed out there that this does spot them up, Baron. They're going to look to try to bait this one up. But drop pink wards, take complete control of the pit. Mega Zero, going to go do some dirty farming. Zion Spartan's right there. Can he stop this? Mega's just trying to clear out the waves, trying to stall out the action as long as possible. But in the meantime, Team Coast going to get right on onto the Baron. Now it's going to be a dragon flight out there before <laughs> Mega Zero gets out alive. Jupiter's going to try to take down the second tier turret. Zion's going in. There's going to be the wind slash out. Bounce away. Super stays alive. Baron down to half hit points. Uh, Daydreaming. Shifter. Shifter's available. He does get death sentence. He's going to be flayed towards the wall. But he will be blown up by Shifter. MIA made it to Swiss cheese as he just gets blown apart now. Baron still available. Ninja gonna has Smite. Pops Paranoia goes in. Looking to see what he can do right now. The bomb is dropped, but he doesn't get the Smite. He gets Silas and feared and destroyed. And that will be Baron over to Coast. If they delay and wait, they let Ninja can tank it up. They get it on their favor. As now all five members have it this time. And now that could be a push down mid for potentially an inhibitor. I mean, Ninja can he build a Triforce after the Spirit of the Ancient Golem. We've seen this before. The problem is that this time he's not ahead. This time if he goes in, he dies. He got blown to pieces. Uh, Chipper didn't even use the de Death Fire Grass to come down there, and the problem is there is no one tanky. Mega Zero does have Spirit Massage and Sunfire Cape, which 99% of the games you play in, that's great for uh, the 27 minute mark. This time around, though, because there's so much burst damage from Chipper, there's so much burst from Blount's part. Isn't just the Coast Pain Train running down upon Complexity? They take out the Inhibitor turret, they take out the Inhibitor, they have the Baron buff still for quite a long time, as he, there was not a long wait to siege those up, and Coast, they're, they're in control of the game now. They've got everything they want. Ninja Ken, though, pushing out. They're not going to, uh, Complexity, not going to let Team Coast get away without a fight. Looking to pick one right now, but uh, this Fusion, actually the furthest behind now Nintendo decks. All of Team Coast will disengage successfully, and there you go. It's going to be a Baron on Team Coast with Fusion. It's going to take it back in a very dangerous place. Now Mega actually running past with Fusion. It's going to take the Scenic Crowd back on out of there for now, but it's nice to see uh, Thresh just get a kind of chased out there. Mega Zero pushing as hard as he can. Now, Complexity, they're not out of this yet. They can always fight back. They've got a team that if one person gets cut out, they're also super dead. But the issue for them is how do they get into a good position? So they've been kind of spread out across the map. What does that set up? Easy LeBlanc kills LeBlanc with her very short cooldown on the ultimate and her very, very, very high burst with the, a now almost a death, the death cap finish on Shifter. It means that they have to stay grouped up. That means that Spartan can do his thing. And well, Riven's pretty scary at this point in the game. Complexity to come back, what they need to do is uh, try and catch someone out in the jungle. And with that, try and force a, a, a 5v4. And if they can kill Shifter at some point, that'll be tremendous because Jin can actually be effective and survive for more than five seconds. 
Yeah, if they can get a good curse from initiation from MIA with that Zombie Zaragosh, he drops the fear, goes on a shifter, throws in all the damage they can. It could be pretty good, but he has M he has Infinity Dash completed for Trooper. There's a Crow Storm, Ottawa's Fusion right now. The fear comes through, explosive shot, Buster shot for the kill. It will be Digicat coming in for the snipe with the paranoia, actually. Uh -huh. And now they're going to get flanked out here. Nintendo X and Daydreaming on the side with Shifter now. Who are they going to look oh, for? Shifter. MIA shows himself right now. He's going to get the fear tether coming in, as well as the Dustbringer. Fear connects. Bombs going to bounce. There's the, me the Mega Inferno Bomb from the side of Ziggs. Can they chase anything else out? Uttered host, sealed them out completely. Shifter winning on the side, drops the ward of the wall. Can you catch anybody else out of this? Like, no, but meanwhile, Zion Spartan has been split pushing against Mega Zero and completely ignoring him. Yeah, and actually Zion now gonna go in onto the turret. About to take it down. Mega Zero. Yeah, Zion's just ignoring Mega Zero right now. Turret is actually aggro, but it's gonna go down. His Mega gonna have enough damage to take him out. He's gonna try to get away. Valor. There's just stun coming out as well. Mega just cannot chase long enough. Shifter, Daydream, and the rest of the coast stopping off that by that dragon. Now gonna push in onto, well, not just the base just yet. They're gonna go help out Zion Spartan. He's looking for the blue buff. Cannot find it. Ninja Ken smites it away. The funny thing is, Mega Zero, had he kept chasing uh, Zion Spartan for the 1v1, would have actually died just because of how much DPS and how much output Mega Zero or uh, Zion Spartan can really dish out at this point. He doesn't have, you know, a bloodthirster like we've seen before, but the Ravenous Hydra, the act the actual spell on that, and the last one for armor penetration means that he will destroy Mega Zero. Just because he's got a lot of armor, he's got a lot of HP, yeah, but the sustained damage from Shivana versus Riven, who's ahead, that sustained DPS is just so much higher. And now, Botlane being pressured by Coast, they did lose uh, Wiz Huge in that past engagement, but in the end, it doesn't really matter because Zion Spartan split push pressure. I mean, even his parents say he split pushes. Even his parents say he split pushes, huh? It's kind of weird. Let's all talk to them about that. I wouldn't want my mom or anybody to bring up the fact that I play League of Legends professionally, well, you know? But <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. If you're, if you're Zion Spartan and... Mom, I split push. Mom, Are I you proud? <laughs> Son, have you been split pushing again? <laughs> That's not our meta in this household. <laughs> we are a five-man team in this household. Now pick Malphite. <laughs> All right, but now that we discussed our family lives a little bit, we're going to see the tier two of the bot lane still stay alive just barely. It's going to fall in the next push here. Zion Spartan, that oh, one-man split pushing machine, will be able to keep Trooper's attention fully uh, on him while he does open up the inhibitor and do as much damage as possible. The tier two does fall. Now bottom lane, Team Coast pressing in for their second phase turn of the game. Trooper's gonna have his work cut out for him, stopping this split push from Zion Spartan. Now Zion has a lot of magic resistance, so not a lot to deny the damage from Trooper. But what he does have is a ton of damage to put back onto him. So Trooper gonna have to keep Zion back away. Trooper's just clearing out minions right now, and the mighty blue caster minions push Zion outside <laughs> the complexity base. Yeah, Trooper will very easily be bursted down by Zion Spartan, no question about that. But Trissana does have very high auto attack range. Zion will need, need to flash on a Trooper to try and burst him down. So that's a very risky. And I think now very low in the bot lane. The hook a bit too strong for him. After wow. retreating, it's going to be Trooper chasing on the Zion Spartan right now. Paranoia available for Ninja Ken if he wants to go in. Flashing away from the Fear Tether, he will be able to get out. No chase. Just yet, we did see Shifter blow MIA up a completely unfortunate go back to heal. The inhibitor in the mid lane did just spawn Destin. It's gonna throw it out there, not gonna connect Undertow does though. They're gonna zone away with those mines, as well as the flame choppers coming in from this region, but establishing some zone. And with that, two inhibitors are still open, so this could potentially be a good, an interesting time for Complexity to hold. If they can hold this out, this game could turn around. This is on Spartan's camp. Oh, initiation onto his fusion. Ninja Ken getting in there. There's going to be the Mega Inferno Bomb. Crow Storm in the back from MIA, but it is going to be Nintendo trying to get out of there. Shifter trying to scare the rest of Complexity away. They are not phased. Taken down to half hit points before he gets on out of there. Now the turnaround as Team Coast looking at DJ themselves, turning the tables on that team fight, and now it's Super. For this member out of the base for complexity, he's going to push them back away. So a little bit scary for both teams, no kills on either side. Uh, unfortunately, complexity, they have a team that can get to a fight very effectively, but any sort of chase afterwards, if they don't get a good fear from Fiddlesticks, they really can't stick on the targets. Uh, they have Daydream with the play on coast to help protect them, but very importantly, no Ancient Quinn for complexity. This is because MIA going for the ability power style of play, uh, going for the, uh, what is it, Queen's Frostbang, I believe? Uh, it's the uh, Frost Queen's Claim, I Frost, believe. Frost Queen's Claim, there we it's go. It's just a Frost Fang right now. It, it's a Frost Fang <laughs> right now. But that does not provide any sort of mobility. The team can't catch up and keep up once you initiate. They have great ways to start a fight, but afterwards, just kind of coast walking away. 
Yeah, while there's a lot of engage uh, from Ninja Cannon and even Mega Zero as well, there's not a lot to stick to the enemy team. So Coast is just like you saw walking away. Now Mega Zero takes a lot of damage. There's the Death Sentence back. Flame Choppers to stop him. He just can't move. And now a lot of damage to come out from Wiz Fusion. The there's the Flash Super Mega Death Rocket. Wiz Fusion finds the kill on the Mega Zero. Nicely played there. Nice poke. Mega Zero tries to take out the Pink Warp, but could not do it. Could not get there in time. A nice. Uh, group up there by Coast to keep it safe, keep the barrier control established, and Baron now live. We could see them look to try to bait it out, or will Ninja can actually bite the bullet and look to go in. He's gonna get poked out a little bit there as he does shield away. Shifter comes in from the side, the ethereal chain connects on the trooper, he jumps away. The second chain comes in onto MI, but he blows up the undertow for the kill, comes in for Nintendo X. And now with that, it looks like it's a sign for them to start. The Baron has two members still gone from complexity side. 22 to 11, doubling up in kills right now. Coast. On to their second fair into the game. Who's going to be there to stop the Ninja Cannon in the area? To put that damage in context on the MIA, that was one spell from Shifter that took him to half HP, and that wasn't even the full duration of the Epsilon Chain. Now Shifter looking to get over the wall as Ninja Ken goes in by the Baron. A little bit too high HP. Could look for another steal with the Flash. Tries it with a Dustbringer. Can't steal it away as a smite from Nintendo Dex gives Coast their second Baron of the game. Oh, that was fantastic. The paranoia vision reduction meant that Coast was a little bit caught off guard. Ninja Ken now in a lot of danger. Don't think he can escape this because down Spartan, he's fast, he's mobile on his first. He's oh, he broke crazy. the chain. He broke the field tether. He's going to go in. Broken wings. Ninja Ken is going to fall here. As there it is. The auto tech knock up in the broken wings for the kill. Now, Baron up second time here for Coast. They will push down and look to secure two inhibitors, possibly three, or maybe the game. And MIA does have a post from up. That's been the big initiation as Nintendo X was eating bombs. Unfortunately, without Ninja Ken to follow up, can they keep the inhibitor alive? It's difficult. <laughs> they got interrupted. The death sentence of the wall. The flight isn't connected. He uses that Tony's Hourglass. Ignite drops down at Mega Zero. He falls as it is oh Trooper on the side trying to take out Wiz Fusion, but Shifter chases him down, forces him back out, and that inhibitor will fall. It's a three for none, and Baron of Team Coast could like to secure the second game right now. Yeah, this is the Shifter show. 11, 1, and 6, just killing absolutely everyone. Death Cap, Death Fire Grasp, and uh, Void Staff closing things out. How I hope, uh, I hope the, the spirit of Hotshot is watching as LeBlanc really coming into her own. And I, for a while, it was like, I'm oh, really going to see LeBlanc in competitive play. Who even plays that champion? And the answer is Shifter. That guy is just incredible. Now pushing in Coast and looking for the death. Just one more turn to go, then the next is going to expose. Bomb comes out. Maybe that's pretty low himself. Flash does, and it comes in, but doesn't connect. Zion's Barn has GA. He's going to charge and gets feared. Gets popped, but with the Pow Pow, Wiz Fusion will take down the rest of this Nexus. And that's game two over to Team Coast over to Complexity.